Hi, everyone. I'm João Cavalcante from Minneapolis Heart Institute, and it's a pleasure to be here with my colleague, Nicholas Van Mingen. We will introduce himself shortly. We are today on the PCR eCourse 2020. It's a pleasure to talk about the state of the art in imaging for mitral valve interventions. My name is Nicolas van Miegem. I'm an interventional cardiologist from the Erasmus University Medical Center, and it's a true pleasure. And it also makes total sense to be joined here uh, together with uh, Joao Cavalcanti, who is a true imaging expert uh, from the Minneapolis Heart Center. So I'm looking forward to the next 15 minutes to discuss imaging for transcatheter mitral valve replacement therapies. Yes, and this uh, symposium could not be done without the sponsorship of Sieveman's Health and Years and Pi Medical Tremensio. And with that, we'd like to start by asking Nicholas, as an implanter uh, there in a very busy uh, heart center too in Rotterdam, what is the current status in Europe uh, for current interventions for patients with mitral valve disease? Well, I think in general, and that that is a general comment, you need to make the distinction between mitral valve repair and mitral valve replacement, obviously. And there are uh, quite some technologies on the market that have uh, the CE mark. Uh, for mitral valve repair, we are all familiar with the uh, mitral clip. But since this year, there is also the Pascal technology that is commercially available throughout Europe. And we have also indirect annuloplasties with Carillion and direct annuloplasty technology with CardioBand. On the transcatheter mitral valve replacement side, uh, f there, are, there is one dedicated uh, commercially available technology that is the Tendine system. And then we also uh, use Sapien balloon expandable technology for degenerated mitral uh, bioprosthesis, mitral rings, and also uh, mitral annular calcifications. I think the situation in the United States is somewhat different. It's a fairly similar in the sense that, yes, FDA approval for valve in valve, for the generator prosthesis, valve in ring, valve in MAC are still a, quite a learning and it's not completely FDA approved. Mm -hmm. We are having trials with the Tendine device that is already approved there for both degenerative uh, calcification of the mitral annulus in MAC, as well as for severe mitral regurgitation native valve, and also the devices that you mentioned for transcatheter repair. So somewhat similar landscape, but a lot that we can learn. And mm. I think, you know, imaging is uh, an important piece of that, isn't it? <laughs> yes, and I think over the last decade, we've seen quite some uh, maturation in that space. And, you know, what changed or what has changed, uh, I feel, uh, in the space of mitral and also tricuspid uh, therapies is that the, the importance of imaging and of the imager. So these procedures are no longer uh, driven by an interventionalist or a surgeon, but it's truly a team approach where there is also an important role for the imager. And I think the first um, aspect that we may want to highlight is the, the maturation of 3D TEE. And I think uh, I can I can I cannot remember uh, having done a case without 3D TEE imaging, uh, both in the tricuspid, but especially also in the mitral, and the new findings that we get from a 3D assessment. So what Isn't is that what amazing? Is, what, yeah. So. Yeah. There are, some, there are a couple of um, new um, measurements and new appreciations that we use now for patient selection. Can you briefly comment maybe? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it comes to think we just take it so for granted that, you know, we do mitral clip now with 3D. But before that, how it was, you know, how was it even possible? And when that came, it was a really like a light and day because we can see very nicely how the whole anatomy. There are a lot of developments into 3D TEE, as you highlighted, the capability of doing real life multiplanar reformat so that we can align not only in the X plane in two orthogonal views, we can also align exactly the best position in where we're going to grasp and we can see where the grasping area is and we can see where the grippers come particularly for the repair but also the capability of 3D TEE to quantify mitral regurgitation we're using the 3D vena contractor area which has some nice uh, publications with correlations with and uh, with MRI but the capability of resolving even in the most challenging group of patients that is patients with atrial fibrillation with high volume rate with very high frame rate, we can see the nice movement of the mitral valve and determine where the pathology is, which is going to ultimately guide where you're going to need to go and how you're going to intervene. What I appreciated from uh, the newer insights in TEE and echocardiography in general are these specific measurements that really help you in 
patient selection and also uh, the indication for some treatment or the other. For instance, uh, posterior leaflet angle. I was, I mean, that really gives you a good appreciation of the tethering, for yeah. instance, and also the tenting area and the coaptation length. Those are concepts that are relatively novel, but seem to be crucial in the selection of the proper technology for the right patient. Absolutely. And all of those now have also started to become important to understand how patients will respond potentially to therapy, right? So the greater the tenting height or the tenting area, the wider the mitral annulus, and you can do the segmentation nicely with three-dimensional volumes. It's going to become important uh, because of the changes that this therapy might provide into these patients. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice to see as well when we'd be talking about imaging, how we could take the same um, software, how could we take the same instruments for measurement and apply that for CT, for example, that would be an ideal. So a plug that we can need to continue to embrace that, not only take it from TE, but also bring it to CT. That would be helpful for us. Yeah. And, I, and I think this is, this is the proper bridge to, uh, CT, to CT in general. But I think what we have to realize is that the mitral valve is not a simple structure. It's, it's really a mitral valve apparatus. And there are so many interactions with other structures like vessels, but also uh, other parts within the, within the heart that needs, needs to be taken into consideration. And this this is, I believe, where CT comes into play. And uh, there is no point in doing a valve replacement without having a pre-procedural CT scanning. That's true. I think for especially for TMVR and even starting with the valve in valve, uh, not to mention the replacement strategies, you have to do a proper CT. The acquisition is somewhat similar to a TAVR, so we need to irradiate throughout the cardiac cycle. It needs to cover the entire cardiac cycle. And several softwares that we have available, for example, Trimenso is one of them that you can do a nice interpolated spline and then calculate what is the mitral annulus in systole, mitral annulus in diastole, measure that, measure the trigone, trigone into the commissural and their posterior. And with that, that would help with the sizing, that would help with the decision of what prosthesis we're going to do, and then measure in systole. Now we can say, which part of systole? Early systole, mid systole, late systole. We should take the whole systole, uh, the new LVOT area. And um, I think that is one of the pieces that we have learned over the years is that if we are too conservative to just take at the very end systolic, we want to exclude a lot of patients that could potentially benefit. So we need to learn how to do that better. And there are software platforms that can definitely help with that. No, but I the imaging acquisition, if I may just make one quick comment, is so key. And I think Siemens, uh, you know, with all uh, the respect to other vendors too, having the dual source system provides you the best temporal resolution. And that is so key in patients that are, again, are challenging, right? Atrial fibrillation, heart failure, fast heart rates, as important as it is to cover, is to have a fast rotation so you can freeze motion. Mm -hmm. And the dual source system can provide you with that. Yeah, and what I, what I wanted to emphasize again is the, the importance of the whole cycle CT because this is a, the mitral valve apparatus is a very dynamic structure. Mm -hmm. The reality in early systole may be different from late systole and again may be different from diastole. And then you already mentioned it, this neo-LVOT, this is as an operator what you know what what makes us anxious what is are we gonna affect the left ventricular outflow tract as we are implanting a new device in the mitral annulus whether it is in a native annulus or it is in a degenerated bioprosthesis or in a degenerated ring and this is i believe where this important concept of the aortic mitral angle comes into play um maybe a brief update on that uh, can you yeah so the aortic mitral angle is an important, another important parameter that we can measure and software also segment the aortic annulus and the mitral annulus, and then you can calculate the angle in between. The concept is that the steeper that would you have, you know, the worse it could be because you would be interacting. Um, it seems to be an important parameter, uh, but in a multi-centric study, it was uh, perhaps because of its reproducibility, not one of the most important ones. So new LVOT was the you know, winner, if you will, uh, in the over aortic mitral angle, but still relevant to this day. And also I would say, look at the right ventricle, the septum. How is that septum? Patients that have pulmonary hypertension, that septum is not going to behave well. Patients will shift into that and that will be an important also understanding 
in addition to the anterior mitral valve leaflet length. And that is key uh, mm -hmm. for us to consider as well, particularly in therapies that will still have the anterior mitral valve leaflet present, valve in ring or valve in MAC. That's, those patients, we tend to have, to have cautiousness because we mm -hmm. don't know where that anterior leaflet is going to go. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think then that, that brings us then to the procedure itself. How, when we have done all this planning up front, how will we uh, bring that to the cath lab? And uh, this is, I believe, also one of the novelties. Uh, also, the CT has entered the cath lab during uh, procedure time. Um, we started using uh, the P Medical System uh, software, the Tremensial software, and used it as an overlay on the fluoroscopy. And not only for mitral valve technology, but also, for instance, for LAA closures, that can become very helpful because, as you know, a lot of these structures yeah. are just radiolucent, so you're not going to see them uh, on fluoroscopy. Yeah, absolutely. We have played a little bit with some of the Siemens uh, work in progress fusion that they have for the tricuspid side, not so much for the mitral, but I could see a totally benefit uh, to have that overlay, uh, in particularly when you still don't have, when you have radiolucent, uh, you know, prostheses or radiolucent structures. Like when you have a valve in valve, you know, unless you're dealing with something like Epic that you can barely see, but majority of the time we can see where nicely is the landing zone. But for native mitro structures in the absence of calcifications, it could be important as well. Yeah, how can you not get excited about the future, right? <laughs> um, and I think another uh, important uh, part for the future is um, simulation. I believe that that is uh, another uh, potential important uh, game changer that we may uh, that we may have especially if we if we want to compare the performance of different devices for for an indication so we have a plethora of uh, devices that are under development and under research for TMVR but maybe there we will end up with a more patient tailored device selection as we are now also doing in uh, in the Tavi space uh, and i think this is where uh, the importance of simulation uh, comes also into play no no doubt about it i think the simulation with both the prediction that we do currently uh, but also looking at you know, computational fluid dynamics and fine element analysis for the interaction, it's going to become important. I still believe that the best simulation in two, we should consider doing follow-up CTs in these patients. So we invest a lot of time to do the pre-procedure and we're talking all about this, this is how we select. But after we implant, we cannot stop there. We have to relearn. Uh, this whole topic that we talked briefly about the uh, intrepid, right? The whole simulation and how did the prosthesis sit afterwards? It was very eye-opening to see that there was actually a reduction in the AP diameter. And what we simulated was actually probably a little bit too conservative because there is a change and that change might allow actually more blood flow to pass through. So we only would learn if we image and we yeah. continue to iterate, right? So there's no uh, short you know, uh, way to replace that information, I think, with the true patient information pre and post. I, I completely concur with that, especially in the field of TMVR. I think a CT follow-up is almost mandatory because we are learning so much and so fast. And I remember one of the big learning points from, uh, from, from my center was that by doing these follow-up CTs, indeed, we realized all of a sudden the dynamics of this neo-LVOT. And, you know, you, you get such a different appreciation of, uh, of, of the reality there. Absolutely. I, I think that is a, going to be one of the future opportunities for all device companies to consider that. We have great technology available. I mean, we are spoiled because uh, we have fortunately the experience with dealing with many of these device companies as well as imaging. Um, and But this dialogue that, you know, seeing you here and being able to share a little bit of our experiences is how the community can benefit and benefit our patients ultimately. I totally agree. So what a, what a, what an exciting uh, discussion what this was. Uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, joining me also in this discussion. I would like to thank Siemens and P Medical for supporting. And I would also like to thank the viewers to sticking with us. Thank you very much and stay well. Thank you.